Good afternoon. On this day, as we celebrate the Inter International Day of Women, it is not out of place that I have more women in the auditorium than men. We congratulate all women and continue to push forward the agenda of uh, the, the entrenchment of the human existence. On this note, I wish my own mom back home in Ghana. Exactly today's week was her birthday as we celebrate the International Day of Women. I bring you greetings from Accra, Ghana, where Ghana has just finished commemorating its Independence Day, 6 March, a day set aside to mark its successful independence from the British imperial power after a decade of long campaign of the United Gold Coast Convention from 1947 to 1957. This day is even more memorable as Ghana became then the first African country to gain its independence and end its converted title, the gateway to Africa, in espousing the ideology of self-governance now as a basis for Africa to shape its identity and to make its destiny into its own hands. We have come far since then and had success in different sectors of our economy and general welfare. The current Ghana government, headed by His Excellency President Anadu Dankwa Ekufuado, aspiring to lead the country, hang the strategic leadership goals on the necessity of making education stand out as fundamental to the eventual success of the nation. His leadership view is that our exemplary sustained democratic consensus and progressive development in the sub Saharan Africa region can only be entrenched further by the provision of free compulsory basic to tertiary education for all within the school age the school going ages irrespective of the cost associated with such a mammal venture as at the time he was making such a proposition specialized analysis of his detractors opposition and naysayers pointed out the unreadiness and impossibility of an african country to achieve such a venture it is refreshing standing here today and announce to the world through this August gathering here in Berlin that essentially education is now free and compulsory in Ghana from basic to the secondary level for all willing to study and add value to their natural talent. And when a student is able to pass through these levels successfully and qualifies to the tertiary level, is afforded national assistance through my institution, the Ghana Scholarship Secretariat, to help pay the costs associated with tertiary education as well. The ultimate goal of the government's plan is to ensure that education plays a critical and positive role in the national development agenda and in helping to integrate international development goals into this agenda. Colleagues here, it is my firm belief education is the most important asset a nation can give its citizens because the development of every nation largely depends on how educated its people are. As with every progressive developmental goal, there will be issues and it, is, it has been our collective gov governance methodology to use appropriate governmental tools, resources and skills to marginalize or reduce to non-significance the propensity of such to halt or collapse the free wills of the educational vehicle steered by the able leadership of His Excellency President Nana Dodankwa Ekufuado. It is worthy to note for any such oriented scheme dubbed as free to work, it must harness the exigencies of quality to mitigate any downfalls and inefficiencies probable in implementation. And in a conference such as this, where the audience of the international community is readily accessible, it is my noble duty through this speech to lay out key gaps needed in the overall success in this laudable scheme. The education agenda by His Excellency Nana Dodanko Ekufuado burdens the national purse close to 2.14% of the allocated governmental revenue towards the overall national development. 
In the 2018 budget alone, for instance, about 76 million revenue of, of, the, of the petroleum proceeds was allocated to the free senior high secondary school program. This ensured that 270,000 more students entered senior high school program than they would have proud to the policy of free education for all. Our institution's task, that's the Ghana Scholarship Secretariat, is to complement government's efforts in promoting education across the length and breadth of the country, irrespective of one's social background. It has been our mission since 1960 to utilize funds from the government, the Ghana Education Trust Fund, which man, whose sole mandate is to have, a, to have a percentage of the value added tax go into that fund, as well as uh, through the benevolence of our donor support to provide scholarships to Ghanaians from diverse backgrounds. Hence, the Secretariat has adopted an open door policy to allow everyone, provided they meet the requirements, apply for scholarships. Our mandate is to back the President's vision of making education accessible to all. This is in line with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals aimed at promoting learning activities irrespective of geographical area or class. Education, like we know, is a human right, and like any other human right, it cannot be taken for granted. In our efforts at the Secretariat to really deepen the frontiers of scholarship, have recently rolled out a decentralization scheme geared at bringing home and to the doorsteps of each Ghanaian family the activities of our institution, offering clear access at the district level through very transparent selection and an award scheme, which we, which, which, which we have established by what we call the District Scholarship Review Committees. It was the practice in the past where students across the length and breadth of the country had to trek and come all the way to Accra, which is the capital city, to apply for scholarship. Under my stewardship, I'm happy to report to you that this practice is no longer the case. Students at the district level can now apply to any kind of award rolled out by our office through proximate offices in their own district. And the selection is done same way before recommendations are sent to us in Accra. We have also developed a very robust software and online application processes where a student can just go online, look through hours available, and apply. All this is done, all this said and done, needs the support of our international partners who share these same educational goals. And it's my kind request that any ideas, tools, resources, and funds that can help sustain and improve our efforts is greatly welcomed. This point is very crucial to me, and I wish to reiterate that all this said and done needs the support of our international partners who share these same educational goals. And it's my kind request that any ideas, tools, resources, and funds that can help sustain and improve our efforts is greatly welcomed. In this collective contagion global world, one well-educated Ghanaian child is not only an asset to Ghana, but to, the, to humanity at large. And the, and the most important resource of any nation is its people. Investing in our children and in the future of our country is the most appropriate investment any government can make. And we are fully committed to continuing on this path. Thank you very much. Danke. Good morning. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, I'm a university professor. I came once in United Ghana to lecture in the Department of African Studies. Um, it's been a pleasure to listen to your presentation. 
um, to realize that you have started decentralizing uh, the selection of students at district level uh, about how they could apply without coming to Accra. I would like to know how easy it is for you. I know that might not be easy. Okay. So can you share a more, more light on the way you succeed in doing that uh, decentralization and what are the challenges that you are facing? Okay. Thank you very much. It was indeed a very mammoth strategic agenda, but the probability that we were going to fail did not, did not deter us from pursuing a course of action which seemed to be very just. This is how it is done. We've established in every district, and for the purpose of record, uh, there are 275 districts in Ghana. In every district, we have set, what we, we have set up what we call the District Scholarship Review Committee. This is the composition of the District uh, Scholarship Review Committee. It is headed by the district or the municipal chief executive, a rep from the traditional authority within the district that is very dominant, a rep from the, from the district or municipal education office of the Ghana Education Service. Then there will be two other reps to be appointed in conjunction with the regional coordinating council to be, to be appointed on the, board, on, on, the, on the committee. The key functions of the committee are, one, to disseminate scholarship information using, using the district information channels. In Ghana, every community has what we call the public address systems. So it's the function of the district scholarship review committee to announce scholarship calls using the, uh, the public address systems, using the churches, using the funeral. You know, in Africa, funeral is, forms a very huge aspect of our culture. Any media that will carry the information of scholarship. The District Scholarship Review Committee must assess those media. Then secondly, after making the call, and you know the academic calendar is different from the physical calendar. Our calendar starts in uh, September. So all districts, all districts across the country has between January and March ending, this month ending, to, to make all the announcements that they need to make that the scholarship program is up. And when we, say local, when we say local tertiary in Ghana, what it essentially means that all post-secondary school, right from the colleges of education, the nursing training colleges, the polytechnics, the university colleges, the universities, all levels from diploma to PhD. Now, when the announcements have been made, the next function of the district scholarship review committee is to collect applications from people who live within the administrative jurisdiction. So they will collect, instead of bringing those applications and its attachments to Accra, which is the capital city, now it will be at the district. They will collect and shortlist applicants according to the thematic areas that we've taken them through. Because resources are quite scarce in Africa, and we should be able to make a lot out of the minimum that we have. So we have 10 thematic areas with the sciences Topping. So they will shortlist applicants. Then the applicants who have been shortlisted will appear before the district scholarship review committee to be interviewed. Now they have between April and June ending to do these two processes, the shortlisting and the interviews. Now when the interviews have been conducted, they will then will have to, they have, they have up to the, the first week in July to forward to us a template which we have designed, soft, to Accra. When we have received this uh, soft copy in Accra of recommended list from a district, then the scholarship secretariat has up to the end of July to do what we call internal auditing to see if the list that came to us really went through the due process, processes that have been laid out. Then when school reopens in August, September, we should be given our award because the recommendations are subjected to the Central Scholarship Review Committee, which is, you know, humility headed by myself together with other people within the educational uh, uh, enclave. Then we, we have up to the end of uh, August to issue what we call scholarship awards. When these scholarship awards are given, it is sent to the various institutions where the students are schooling. 
and by the end of September, all institutions must be paid of the academic facility user fees. Then the cycle repeats itself again in the next year around the same times that have been set. So this is the procedure, very stringent, very transparent, open and accessible. Aside going through all this, uh, every, every student has a right because we've given some right to the district scholarship review committee on some access to our online platform. So a student can just upload certain information onto, our, onto an online desk and to go to a district that is very close to him or her. So this is the procedure and this is how we want, to, we want it to work in Ghana. About, about your communication. So, my first question, maybe you can say, uh, how, uh, what is the position of the private sector in your new educational policy in Ghana? It seems like uh, your new president I mean, is making uh, education free. As I know, during the era of Nkrumah, both I mean Nkrumah and Jerry Rowling, education was free in, in Ghana. Uh, do you agree with me? Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Education then, as, as it has been stated in the 1992 Constitution of Ghana, ought to have been free from basic education to even tertiary. But the details of the Constitution were not given real meaning to till His Excellency the President of Ghana, Nanadu Adam Kwekufuadu, came in. If you had followed the educational landscapes of Ghana, you realize that it has gone through various transformation. This free senior high secondary school thing that we are talking about is it's not just tuition. Now, every Ghanaian child is fed, clothed, provision of uh, teaching aid, accommodation, everything that will make the, the, the Ghanaian child comfortable to study Sorry, is... Pro what, what happened during the Nkrumah era? During the Jerry Rollins time, that was when we introduced the, what we call the junior high school. It was, only, it was only tuition and some basic materials that were free. Now what is free is a boarding and lodging, and in addition to even school uniforms. And those who are not even in boarding schools are afforded one hot meal a day for coming to school. All these promotional things are to ensure that uh, every child comes to school. Now in terms of privatization, if you have studied our, our, our educational system very well, you see that uh, we, we have a lot of private sector involvement in our education because it is to augment the government's effort. For, inst for instance, the statistics that are available now shows that uh, if you come to the local, if you, if you come to the tertiary, tertiary level, you have more institutions running tertiary programs than even the government wants. And for this, the, the scholarship scheme that has been espoused by His Excellency covers both private and public. Uh, the, it's the basic school. Even the basic school, we have a lot of private schools. And that is where the issue of affordability came in. That if I can afford, why do you bring in a free secondary school? But it's optional. Every Ghanaian has a child to take their children to any kind of school that they want. But it's the majority of the people who could not afford. In my submission, I related that uh, for the 2017-2018 academic year, 270,000 more Ghanaian children were given access to secondary school because of the free senior high school. They will not have gained admissions into school because of affordability, but, but for 
the free senior high school. So I think by and large, it, it has been one of the flagship uh, uh, policies of His Excellency the President, and Ghanaians are very much excited about it. Thank you.